So today I'm going to be talking about how you go about testing an EVAP vent valve and the wiring going to it. So if you're getting EVAP vent valve codes like a P0446, P0449, a P2420 code, or any code related to the vent valve, and you need to test it, then that's what I'm going to be showing inside of this video. And there can be different types of designs when it comes to these vent valves. They can be built into the charcoal canister, which is this right here. This is a charcoal canister. This is out of a 2012 Toyota Corolla. And that's going to be the vehicle that I'm going to be showing how to go about doing these tests. This pretty much is going to be the same procedure for like 95% of the vehicles out there. And so basically the EVAP vent valve, it can be built into the charcoal canister. It can be located right next to it. Or like this, it could be located inside of this right here, which is called the leak detection pump. This leak detection pump has the vent valve built into it, along with the pressure sensor and a small little vacuum pump that'll put the EVAP system into a vacuum. The computer will close that vent valve since it's a normally open valve. And then the pressure sensor that's built into there is going to report whether or not it's holding pressure or not. I'm going to get on the computer and I'll give a basic overview of what's going on with the EVAP system and how all this works and what's going on with it. And some test tools that you're going to need is that number one, if you have a good OBD2 scan tool and it has the option inside of there where you can activate that vent valve, then that would come in very handy. You can get up underneath there and basically you just turn it on and off. Then you try to listen to see if you can't hear it click. Even though sometimes it can be kind of hard to hear it click. If you could hear it click, then you know it's working. Also, you can activate it and be sure you've got voltage going to it and things like that. But I know most people aren't going to have this type of scanner tool. So I'm going to show how you can go about doing this with just a multimeter because you can also just use a multimeter to test this. And there's some basic tests that you could do to be sure everything's working. So that's a basic overview of what's going on inside this video. I'm gonna jump over on the computer and just give a real brief overview of what's going on with the EVAP system and what I'm gonna be doing when I go to test that vent valve. And then I'm gonna go out to the car and show you what I'm talking about. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back and I'm on the computer. And one thing to mention about these EVAP systems is that if you do go to work on a vehicle, it's always a good idea to get a diagram for that specific vehicle. That way you know for sure what's going on because these systems can be designed differently. Components can be located differently. Components can even have different names sometimes. So it's always a good idea to get a diagram for that specific vehicle that's going to be worked on. But the basics of how these EVAP systems work is that they take the gas vapors from the gas tank and feed them up to the engine to be burnt away. That way the gas vapors don't escape into the atmosphere. And the basics of how this works is that the gas vapors are going to leave the gas tank. They're going to go through a hose over to what's called a charcoal canister, which is kind of like storage for the gas vapors. Either built into the charcoal canister or located right next to it is going to be what's called a vent valve. And the vent valve does a few different things. The vent valve is a normally open valve, which means it's going to stay open open until power goes to it, which is usually 12 volts. And the main reason that the vent valve even exists is that when you go to get gas and you go to fill up the tank, all the gas vapors that are inside of the gas tank, they're going to get pushed towards the EVAP system. And so that the EVAP system doesn't get overloaded by all these gas vapors getting pushed towards it, they're going to get filtered through charcoal pellets, and then the gas vapors are going to go out through that vent valve. A common thing that happens with these vent valves is that they get stuck shut. And if it does get stuck shut, when you go to fill up the tank and you go to put gas in the gas tank, the nozzle will keep clicking off. This is because all those gas vapors, they're not going to have no place to go, and they're going to start pushing out through that filler neck which is going to keep shutting off that gas nozzle. So that's a common symptom when those vent valves get stuck shut. Of course, they can also get stuck open or there could be a wiring problem going to it. But if you ever have that happen, very likely that vent valve is stuck shut or clogged right there. The hose is going to leave the charcoal canister and it's going to go up into the engine compartment to what's called the purge valve. And basically the purge valve just stays closed so that the gas vapors don't escape. But then when the engine's running, at some point the computer's going to send it a signal to open and then all the gas vapors are going to go into the engine to be burnt away. And so that's a real basic overview of what's going on inside of the EVAP system. Like I said, it's always a good idea to get a diagram for the specific vehicle being worked on. That way you know for sure what's going on. And so the basics of what's going on with these vent valves is that they're just a solenoid that's just opening and closing when the computer tells it to. There will be different types of designs. Sometimes they'll just be a standalone solenoid that's built into the charcoal canister. Sometimes they'll be separate, but they will be located right next to the charcoal canister somewhere. But sometimes they can't be separate. These are the easiest ones to work on. And then sometimes they're built into what's called a leak detection pump, which is also very common. Many Toyotas have these, Dodges, Fords. They're fairly common. And basically what's going on with these leak detection pumps is that they got the vent valve built into them. They also have a little vacuum pump that's going to put the whole system inside of negative pressure. And then they also have a pressure sensor inside of there that's going to detect the pressure and be sure everything's working correctly. There can be variations on this. Sometimes the pressure sensor will be located somewhere else. 
and things along these lines. But basically, the vent valve is going to be built into these leak detection pumps. And so there's two ways to go about testing these vent valves, which I'll go over later in this video. But basically, you can apply voltage and just listen to see if you hear a click. And if you hear a click, usually that means it's working. That's a very common method to go about testing these, especially if you have a good scan tool that could turn on and off that vent valve. Then you can get up underneath the vehicle and try to listen for a click. Again, in this video, I'm going to go over how you could do this without a scan tool. But if you have a good scan tool, you can use that. And then you can also use a multimeter and check it for ohms. You can try to look up what the rated ohms are for that specific solenoid. Since there is differences between the solenoids, but usually as long as it falls between 20 and 50 ohms, then the coil that's inside there is usually good. And of course, if that coil's open, then you know it's bad. You know it needs to be replaced. When you test it for ohms, it only tests that little coil that's inside there. So if it is stuck in there for some reason, then that won't test for that. But you can use ohms to test the coil that's inside there. So there's two main ways to go about testing these vent valves, which I'm going to go over next and show how to do. When you go to test the wiring inside these EVAP systems, like I said before, it's a good idea to get a wiring schematic for that vehicle. That way you know for sure what's going on. But it is very common for 12 volts to be constantly going to the vent valve when the key goes into the on position. And the computer uses the ground side to control that vent valve. So basically, if you put the key in the on position and you go test the wiring going to that vent valve, one of the wires should be hot. You should be getting 12 volts going to the vent valve at all times. And the ground side is going to be controlled by the computer. This ground side wire is going to be the only wire that's going to be difficult to check if you don't have a good scan tool to turn on and off that vent valve. Everything else can be easily checked with the multimeter to see if it's working. And if you do have a good scan tool that could turn on and off that vent valve, then you could just check and be sure you're getting voltage down there. But if you don't have a scan tool that could turn it on and off, then what I would do is I'd be sure the vent valve's good. I'd be sure you're getting 12 volts going down to that circuit. And if those all check out good, then very likely there's some kind of issue with this ground wire that the computer's using to control that vent valve. So as long as you've got the vehicle wiring schematics, you can't still use a multimeter. You can't go and check that wiring for an open or a short or anything like this. But basically testing this ground wire is going to be the one thing that's kind of difficult without a good scan tool. So the first thing to do is to find these two wires going to the vent valve, which this schematic is for that 2012 Toyota Corolla that I'm going to be checking out. So pin 8 in that leak detection pump is going to be the ground wire and pin 9 is going to be the positive side, is going to be the positive voltage going in. So next, I'm going to go over all the options to go test that vent valve and how to test the wiring going to it. So I'll be back. Okay, so I'm back. And the first way you can test that vent valve and the most common way is going to be that you just send it 12 volts and you listen for a click. And if you hear a click, then usually that means it's working. And so if you have a vent valve that's separate from the charcoal canister or it just has two wires going to it, then that one's going to be easy to check. You could just go to the wires and you know which wires to go to. If you have like this, if you have a leak detection pump, then you're going to need to get a pin out to know which two wires are going to that vent valve. Because like this leak detection pump here, it has a pressure sensor built into it and it also has a little vacuum built into it. And so for this 2012 Toyota Corolla, it's going to be these two bottom pins right here. I have the schematics for it. It's going to be pins 8 and 9. So those would be the ones that I'm going to go to so I could test this vent valve that's built into this leak detection pump. So I'm going to go ahead and connect these jumpers to those pins. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back and I got my jumper wires going to the pins that's going to that vent valve located inside that leak detection pump. And one thing I wanted to mention is that you can just use a regular 9 volt battery. The click won't be as loud as it usually is. You won't be able to hear it as good. But you can use a 9 volt battery and see if you can't hear it click. Especially if there's not a lot of other noise going on. I'm going to be using a regular 12 volt automotive battery so that the click can be heard inside of this video, hopefully. And so this is my jumper wires right here. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to connect it and disconnect it. Connect it and disconnect it. And every time I connect it, I should hear a click. And so here I go. I'm going to go and connect it. I don't know if you can hear that. Hopefully you can, but it is clicking. Every single time that I go to touch it, I could hear it and it is clicking. So basically, since I could hear it clicking, I know that vent valve is working. And so that's a real common way to go about testing that vent valve and be sure it's working. Basically, you just send it power and if you could hear a click, then usually that means that it's working. The next way you go about checking is use a multimeter and use ohms to check the coil that's built into that solenoid. So next, I'm going to go and show how you could do that. So I'll be back. And so the next way to go and test it, or at least the little coil that's inside of there, is to use a multimeter and use ohms. And you check to see what the ohms are. 
ohms is basically this little symbol right here that looks like a horseshoe and you can try to look up what the rated ohms are for that specific solenoid because every solenoid is going to have a different rated resistance value and if you can find that information and it falls below that or goes above that then you know it's bad but most of the time these vent valves they fall between 20 and 50 ohms they fall somewhere inside of there like this one right here it's saying 28.3 so in this case that would be good if you don't get no reading say like this if you don't read anything, then you know that winding inside there, that coil, you know that it's open and you know it needs to be replaced. And so this won't tell you if it's opening and closing, but that little coil inside there, that little winding, when power goes to it, it gets energized and it pulls on a little magnet, which opens and closes that vent valve. So you could check that little winding that's inside there and see if it's good. But that's basically it. That's the second way you go about testing that vent valve is to use a multimeter and check it for ohms. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go out to the vehicle and I'm going to check the wiring. So I'll be back. All right, so I'm back and I probed into those wires going to that vent valve. As you can see right there, I probed into those two pins. And those are the two pins that's going to the vent valve located in that leak detection pump. And just to show you why it could be handy to have one of these scan tools like this, and if you do have one, how they work, I got it hooked up to this test light right here. And basically I'm on activation test for this vent valve. So I'm just gonna click on and off, and that light will go on and off because I'm sending a signal to the computer to turn that vent valve on. And so I'm gonna go and click on, off, on, off. And so as you can see, when I click on and off, it turns that light on and off. I just wanted to show you that if you do have a good scan tool that could turn it on and off, you could just tap into those pins and see if you're getting voltage. But I know most people won't have a scan tool like this, so next time I show you how you can do it with the multimeter. So I'll be right back. And so if you don't have a scan tool that can turn it on and off like that, the next thing to check for is that when the key's in the on position, there should be a steady 12 volts coming down to this circuit. The computer controls the vent valve through the negative wire. So I got the key in the on position, and I got this going both to a test light and a meter, just to show you what I'm talking about. And yes, we are getting voltage down on the hot side going to that vent valve. I'm going to go ahead and show you what the voltage is with the meter. And there it is, it's 12.30 volts, 12.29. Hard to get a good ground over here. So we know we're getting voltage down here. And so the last thing and the most difficult thing to check, if you don't have a scan tool to turn the vent valve on and off, is going to be that negative control wire going back to the computer. Switch for this 2012 Toyota Corolla is going to be this wire right here, this negative wire. That would be the last wire to go and check. And if you check everything else out, if that vent valve is clicking on and off, you could hear it, it is working. You test it with ohms and it checks out good. You're getting power down here to the vent valve. Then the last thing to do would be to get schematics and check that wire going back to the computer that controls it on that negative side. And so that's basically it. I just wanted to give a basic overview of how you go about testing a vent valve in an EVAP system, along with the wiring going to it. If you have anything to add, please comment down below. If you have any questions, ask me, I'll try to answer them. If this video helps you, please click like, please click subscribe, and have a good day.